what has landed me in the Internet Hall of Fame very probably is MP3 and contributions to MP3, AAC, audio coding and making it work and helping to get it spread. When I got this topic for my PhD work, in fact it was not my idea but the idea of my thesis supervisor, um, people thought this is impossible. We will never be able to compress music in a way that the golden ears can be happy with it. So there were a couple of years really uh, finding ways how to do things, looking what people have done to do speech coding and then finally getting some hints from others and some ideas and making it work in a reasonable way. And then we still had a long way to go. It was a whole team then and we knew all the others working on the topic in the world because it was a small community uh, and there was standardization. So and that in fact helped. We had a big competition. <laughs> in fact, two, li two labs within my own country, even within the home state of Bavaria, were competing together with others uh, to become the final standard for audio compression. And in fact, in some way, both were winners because uh, the other team responsible for layer two, as we call it, uh, they are in hundreds of millions of devices as well. Just all the fame, all the recognition by the public went to MP3. In the story of MP3, from first work to standardization to real widespread application, there was a period of more than 10 years. And in these 10 years, several times it looked like we were the one who lost, who were out. <laughs> this development, I think, uh, really uh, is a good example for collaborative work. There was a time when there was only a few people here and there, but relatively early on, already in the process of standardization, uh, we had our group of companies working together, people from Hanover and Erlangen in Germany, but as well from AT&T Bell Labs in the US. So in fact, there's my friend Jim Johnston, uh, who as well can be called inventor of MP3, like a number of other people as well. So we really had uh, collaborative work and I think I should emphasize that I'm standing here as a symbol for a full group of people, and some uh, as managers, some as scientists, some as getting everything to work really, and so on. What the development of MP3 meant to Germany um, is uh, twofold in some sense. One is early on uh, it was difficult to persuade German companies that this might be something interesting. In fact we first talked even to music labels in Germany about usage of that technology and they were not interested. Uh, we talked to companies whether they would build devices. Again, some of the best known brands at that time in Germany were not interested. Later on, I think uh, MP3 is a success story for Germany as well. Of course, there are all these devices built in other countries, but still there's a lot of money coming in from patent royalties and there's a lot of companies in Germany making money on that technology. So uh, today we see a lot of people in Germany being proud about this development and that it started there. Oh, for me that's really the story of my life in some sense. I still sometimes feel like I'm in a dream because uh, when people ask um, what this research could result in early on. Uh, we were dreaming of millions of users, but now literally it's billions of users. Uh, so yes, uh, it impacted me, of course it helped my career, and now I'm in the same position my thesis advisor was at that time. 
I'm advising, advising young students uh, to help them get good ideas and hopefully have some real breakthrough technology in the future.